Welcome to Floating NFT Podcast. I'm Shouwen. And I'm John. Welcome back, John. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Always. I'm very thankful you make the time to be here. Me too. I'm yeah. thankful that you uh, <laughs> give me the lessons. <laughs> no problem. So today we're going to talk about tea brewing. Okay. And I think in the next few episodes, we are going to focus on tea brewing. Um, and at home, you continue to work on tea drinking. Mm -hmm. How about that? Okay. Uh, do you think tea brewing is difficult or s not that difficult? I think it's extremely difficult. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the more detailed you get into it, it's extremely difficult. Excellent. Yeah. But when we really like look at tea brewing, it's actually a very simple behavior. Mm -hmm. Dry leaves into a tea brewing utensil or vessel and hot water in. Right. Wait. Yeah. And then pour it out. Pour it out. That's yeah. it. That's it. The action is extremely uh, simple. Mm -hmm. And so since it's so simple, I will say two of the most direct impact the tea brewers at the tea brewing place that the very that is actional. If, if there's such a word, action, I did like, I, <laughs> my own <laughs> word as a foreigner many times is actional. Yeah, yeah, I like that word. Okay, if you don't understand, just whatever. <laughs> that we actually put action into it mm. is the first one, first step. What do you think? Our direct impact as a tea brewer in an action way is water into the pot. Mm -hmm. And. I don't know if you noticed, there are two, kind of two major ways that you see in the uh, Chinese Gong Fu tea brewing session. One is yeah. in one spot, we call it Ding Dian Chong, in one spot pouring hot water into the Gai Wan or a tea pot. Mm -hmm. And another way you also probably see pretty often, they pour water in and circle yeah. the guy one or circle the teapot. And since this is such an important place that our impact as a tea brewer in a tea brewing, I wonder how much actually people pay attention or ask the question or realize why do we do this or why do we do the circling style? Hmm. Do you do it one way or the other? I do it in one spot. Why? Um, because you do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and I think copying is a good way yes. to learn. <laughs> yes, very good. And I also copy that. Mm. I copy tea brewing um, because I watch people brewing tea. Mm -hmm. And if I remember it correctly, most of the people that watch in Taiwan, it's well, Taiwan is where I actually learn my tea. Most people that I learn from do pointy, one spot pouring hot water into the teapot. Mm -hmm. And here I see a lot of people doing the circling style. I actually don't know where it come from. <laughs> yeah. Maybe also from Taiwan. Some people maybe also like to do it. I just never seen them. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, I don't remember seeing them. And since this is so important, let's try both of these okay. methods and see if you notice the difference. That's a good idea, yeah, because I've never very important. I've never even tried to do it the other way because uh, I just want to uh, do it just hitting the And the, the thing one is, spot. I saw so many people, because, you know, we have Instagram nowadays and I see people uh, showing their wonderful home brewing sessions with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with their friends and public, and I saw a lot of uh, circling style. Yeah. Yeah. So we should try. <laughs> I know that they do the circling style for pour over coffee, right? Yeah. I don't know I if there's think, any relationship, yeah. but... <laughs> Maybe not because of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so there's one more part. And today we are going to drink some uh, hong shui, the same hong shui for two uh, different uh, pour water in style. Okay. Um, hong shui huai. I need some relaxation. Everyone needs to relax, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has been pretty intense for me. Uh... Uh, because I have some, I, I couldn't work very well lately for more mm. than two weeks now. Uh, and my body all feel very tense up. Mm. So I thought Hong Shui should be maybe pretty relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good choice. So which way do you want me to do first? Oh, 
Well, maybe we should do. I'm excited to try the the so circling cool. one. Let's so let's do so that cool. one first. <laughs> Sounds good. Just because I've never seen you do it, and I've never and tried see if it I can before. Do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think you have this hong shui before. Mm. It doesn't smell familiar. Yeah. It's a new hong shui tea that is not released yet. Ah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to say the name. Then. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's do the circling hot water into the clay teapot style one. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the like, yeah, the mat kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Fell down a little bit. The pot sank a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should pour some water in here so it can... No, nah, that's a good idea. Kind of have a cushion mm -hmm. effect. I'd like to offer you some names for the two different styles. Oh, thank mm. you. So it's not so confusing to say it over and over again? Okay. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> One and two. Whirlpool <laughs> and waterfall. Whirlpool and waterfall, okay. <laughs> All right. So first cup of the whirlpool style. Whirlpool style, yes. <laughs> Circle your teapot, please. <laughs> So just do a snapshot, since right now there's no reference, mm -hmm. and on the top of that, this is a brand new tea to you. Yeah. But pretty yummy tea, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it so far. Mm hmm Yeah. Feel a nice spread already. Yeah. I'm not sure yet where I feel it in the mouth. It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The thing yeah. is, sometimes mm -hmm. I suggest you. Mm -hmm. I tell you something, so you got a suggestion, and your mind might be thinking that. Yeah. So I feel it's overall it's a very good tea, right? You kind of check everything right now. And then you mentioned that you say you are not sure where you are feeling it in the mouth. Mm -hmm. It's not very focused. Mm. Yeah. And then from the scent, I actually also feel it that way. Like, oh. Yeah, it's... Okay. It's. I mean, there's a strength, there's mm -hmm. that structure and stuff, but there's something about it that is not very focused. Interesting. Ah, mm. So okay. let's do the following brewing. Cool. And then... Uh, see if we continue to develop this way, and then when we do the waterfall style, and see if something shift. Okay. So, Whirlpool no, like style. Ready to like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> waterfall. It. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the whirlpool. Woo! This is fun. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was a strong whirlpool. <laughs> I might actually develop some uh, liking to this. Action of it's kind behavior. of fun, right? You can really. <laughs> I might actually like it. <laughs> Let me feel like a child. That it I is can kind of yeah. Circle it's... my pot and just do whatever I want. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> I mean, I, I really love my tea practice, but when I'm a little bit irritated, I feel like. I have to focus so much yeah <laughs> the whole time i remember oh quite a long time ago and i told noah that i was in kind of a slump a tea brewing slump he told me to just brew it like purposefully slumpy bad like purposefully sloppy <laughs> ah. and it really helped to just like relax me a little bit yeah i just died just kind of like pour the water like however you want and just you know do whatever you want and it mm. felt good to kind of like get a load off you know, when you need and, it. And then get back to it again, yeah. right? Just yeah. like, it's like a way to, felt like a good way to shake it off a little mm. bit. So this is my slumpy. <laughs> <laughs>
whirlpool. <laughs> whirlpool. There you go. <laughs> Style. <laughs> Which is really fun. <laughs> yeah. It seems fun. Whoa. Now it's a strong brew. Look at the color. Good. Beautiful. Nice Deep color. color. Juicy. Yeah, nice color. I'm excited for this one. It looks oily too, huh, on the top. I love to see the uh, layer yeah. of oil on the top <clears throat> yeah. of a... Uh... I think I see what you're saying on the... on the scent. Just, what you said last time. Just not as focused, huh? Mm. And even in the mouth. Mm -hmm. It's a good tea, very smooth. Yeah. It is really smooth. Yeah. <laughs> and it enters the body, mm -hmm. no problem. If you really want to uh, check it, it's on the side, yes. Underneath the si tongue a little bit, on the top of the tongue, roof, yes, check, check. But there's a. Uh, Almost dissociation mm. within the itself. Mm. 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 And yet, it's still a good tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the strength of the tea and the quality mm. of tea <clears throat> cannot be undermined. It show up. Yeah, it show up. But I think. We as tea brewer, we need to focus the tea, mm -hmm. and in a way make it shine. Yeah, you know, not just make it like I'm not sure if it's focused or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I not focused or the tea is not mm. focused or both? You know, but it's good to know this though. Yeah. That's the step number one that the tea drinker actually notice there is something off about the tea, and. Mm it can be changed because sometimes there's a situation is it might not be able to be changed hmm. for example it happened in the uh, processing hmm. okay. it's harder for us to change that mm -hmm. part in the brewing way or in another case they say if the tea is loaded with pesticide that is uh, normally for me the tea will show also agitation. Mm. Um, I don't think I'm that powerful to reverse that as a tea brewer, and mm. I don't want to reverse that because I don't want to drink that tea when the when the tea have so much amount of pesticide and irritating my body, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to be able to tell the differences of actually what we can do and what we cannot do with the mm. tea. Yeah. This is interesting building on um, when Noah was talking about the roasting because that felt more like, you know, when we drank the raw, the the tea before it, it was roasted, it kind of had that similar sort of like, there's elements of what you wanted there, but, you know, it was really the the roasting that focused that it. Foc yeah. And so that kind of, it seems like a good like first part to this which is that's the processing part this is the brewing part you know what can you do on the brewing side to yeah. kind of focus it more yeah. yeah i think one of my teachers say this pretty well he said tea have three parts and he referred it like music he said farmers write the music you know well you can argue the farmer didn't write a good music or the farmer write an excellent piece of music hmm. there are tools two ways right mm -hmm. and then tea roaster is almost the second part of the composer there is that really beautiful music bass already but he he or she want to alter that and recompose it make it tighter make mm. it uh, into a, a slightly different feeling and it become into a wonderful piece of music that has been written however what then if that piece of music is not played or not played well, mm -hmm. so brewer is the performer, 
Mm-hmm. They got to learn how to play that piece of music, and then, but if I'm I'm a performer and I don't have listener, it's not as fun. I mean, mm-hmm. I will enjoy myself, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But yeah. the feeling of somebody feeding the player, because there's like listeners there, and they are really into it too, and they can appreciate it. They it makes a completion. Mm-hmm. Because the farmer, the composer, want that piece of music to be heard and appreciated, mm-hmm. you know. And so every single part of it, if we can all play well, it turns out very beautifully, right? You you go to yeah. concerts like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really like that comparison because, like, as you said, like with a good tea or with a good written piece of music. You can kind of play it. You can perform it kind of badly, and people will still be like, "Oh, that's, that's a really pretty good. nice piece of yeah, music." Yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah. But obviously, you know, if you perform it really well, then it's even better. But, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, whirlpool number three. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. Woo. I'm glad we're drinking this tea. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> I should probably drink Hongshui all the time, because when I talk about it, I get super excited. <laughs> <laughs> I need Hongshui to. You have something to bring you down. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I do already feel more relaxed than when oh, we started. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, T. <tea>. Thank you, T. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm not gonna put it back in there. It's like full of water. Full of water. <laughs> <laughs> that feeling it's almost like I can feel in the scent that whirlpooly kind of like it's not like it's not going straight in for me it's almost like even the scent of it is thank you for saying that because I didn't want to say that because I thought well if I said it would it become a little bit crazy but I no, should say I'm sure when you like, I can say whatever I would like <laughs> It's almost like I'm. Tr- it's like I'm trying to. Like, circle, find circle it. with it, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I think that this is what calls uh, not focusing. Mm. Mm. It does feel that way. <laughs> it does, yeah. And in the cup, the empty cup doesn't do that as much. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's clearer in the empty cup. Yeah, yeah. more clear is ever. Mm-hmm. But I think it still creates an impression of that. Like, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Seriously, where are you going, Sand? Yeah. But you know, somehow it can pass nostril, our nose, and it can go to our head, but like, I cannot trace it. Hmm. I don't know where the tea is going. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? That is really I kind of feel a little bit dizzy. <laughs> 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 it's like I'm in the water park right now. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> mm. And the broth also shows that mm-hmm. I'm still really not be able to locate where's the focus right now mm-hmm. yeah of the breath but it's kind of also everywhere you yeah know? I mean I am really feeling it getting down into my yeah. it's a powerful body. tea yeah. yeah okay I'm gonna take the leaves out and I'm gonna do the second style it's called waterfall waterfall according to Noah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm actually amazed that I was that at how like um, much the like the direction of the scent matched the direction of the way that you poured it. I didn't think I was even going to notice anything. So I'm really surprised that that it was so much like that motion. I think the more you practice, you're becoming more and more sensitive of what's happening. Mm. And I'm a big believer, if you notice something in tea, the way that you are tasting tea, you notice there's something right or something off, and then you want to change it, then there's a way to change it because you notice it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But if you like, just like you say, some some people might drink this and say it tastes very good. That's it. That's the end of story. Mm-hmm. You know, and then so there's no way to want to have that. Even the motivation of like, I think the tea can be better. Mm-hmm. There's something off about this cup of tea right now. 
you know. And I think this is where uh, tea practice uh, is essential. That's why I, I focus so much in my tea journey and in my own tea journey and in the way that I share with people is tasting tea, learn to taste tea. And as you notice, I am not a person to teach that share with people say let's taste 100 different teas and then let's taste what Dongding tastes like, let's taste what Wuyi tea tastes like, let's taste what Dragon Well tastes like. For me, what a tea tastes like is the moment you taste it, you know, mm -hmm. what it tastes like. Yeah. You know, my curiosity is always in this tea tastes like this the most the moment I taste it. Well, is it a good tea or a bad tea? Mm -hmm. And what makes me think that is a good tasting tea and a bad tasting tea? Mm. You know, I don't want to say more because <laughs> I'll become very grumpy. <laughs> I'll preach. I'll start to preach. <laughs> so I just leave it right there. <laughs> So the initial smell should smell the same, hopefully, mm. or similar <laughs> than the previous whirlpool style. Because mm. I haven't done anything to it mm. yet. <laughs> I just warm it up. Okay. So the waterfall style, Ding Dian Chong. You choose a spot and you go for it. Mm. Okay. Do you want to talk about what spot you choose, or do we should we leave that for <laughs> another yet. time? <laughs> Not yet. Do you know what I want to talk about? The spot that you choose, you choose, and also, what kind of waterfall do you want to do, and mm. why? Oh yeah. And there's different waterfall. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. For another episode. Yeah. <laughs> You want to drink it or not? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think since I started to do tea, I do the waterfall style. That's why when you uh, mm -hmm. first came to drink tea with us, how many years ago? Four? Four years ago, I think. Yeah. Four? It was that way. So you observed mm -hmm. that way and you went home, you repeated that way. Yeah. I think I have been doing that way for, yeah, since day one, I think. I'm not sure, actually. I mm. don't remember if I have, like, videos from 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just feels see. like it would be a hard thing to change at this point. Like, I even had to change because before I knew you guys, I was brewing with my right, I was pouring the water with my right hand oh. for actually a few years before I finally decided to I do need to do it with left my left hand. hand. Yeah. I see there's another detail. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you set up your tea setting? Cha mm -hmm. I guess, tea brewing session that it become a, I guess in feng shui sense, a good flow. Right. Yeah. I would say now it's, I still, from day one, I did waterfall style, but like you say, I copied somebody, so I was not conscious. Mm -hmm. And now it's very consciously which style of waterfall it become detailed mm. yeah okay so waterfall one first infusion it's really yeah <laughs> It's just very clearly clear. The structure is very clear <laughs> yeah. going up. And before, oh, yeah. there was a structure of going up, but it's it's moving too much. I right. feel kind of dizzy. <laughs> With the steel tea broth, that's how much it <laughs> impacts the tea. Yeah. Yeah. That is just amazing. 
And then let's look at the 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 in the, the, the broth. Then I think it will make a huge impact mm. too. Every time I come in here, I get my mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> mm. Show an AK the mind blower. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just so much more focused. Like, it's just... Yeah. That you can find a, a center, and yet you can find it move. Mm -hmm. And now this, it move, and you can trace where it's going, and it's kind yeah. of shocking. Yeah. <laughs> shocking in a nice way, like, oh, wow, it's going there. Oh, right. whoa. It's like the last one where we you were like, you know, where are you going? Yeah, and this one is like, I'm I, going there. Yeah, That's where I'm, I'm going. going. There. Cool. <laughs> Let's look at the broth. Oh, yeah. There's a focus, mm. center, and then, then you trace its movement a mm -hmm. little bit more easily in the mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's so much more. Yeah, it's just yeah. You feel it move, mm -hmm. you know, feel in the, the mouth. Yeah. And of course, you feel it move in the body in a nicer way. Oh yeah, I'm feeling yeah. it spreading all over my tongue and just. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That is so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, and then the way it moves into the body become almost also more focused and yeah. more detail mm -hmm. it's no longer just the shoulder i think you can feel more too yeah of the movement of this team oh yeah yeah it become <laughs> more wholesome in a way mm -hmm. you know i think with the uh, whirlpool style yeah. it's not that it's not moving the, this tea can move that's yeah. the thing this tea can move <clears throat> but move in the unfocused way almost a little bit not comfortable mm. <laughs> Dizzy, I describe mm -hmm. it. But this way, then you watch it move with a center. Yeah. And then it become wholesome and graceful. Just like a good dancer. Mm. It's not just crazy all over the place. I also feel like it's really <laughs> leaving a much like clearer and stronger presence long after yes. the, the sip, long after the cup is gone. Yeah. And I'm not and I'm not saying it wasn't necessarily there before, but it was just like less, like yeah, because um, in a way you are not sure sturdy. where you are looking at, mm -hmm. right? And now it's just like, oh, I'm looking at this. I'm I'm feeling so. Oh, wow, after this, mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, very good notice in John. Wow, I'm impressed. This is awesome. I'm, I'm impressed by this amazing <laughs> tea. <laughs> I always forget if I should slide the, slide that up. Yeah. <laughs> I will consult a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Do the guests need to slide the custom bag or not? Mm. It's still there for me, like the last cup. The impression, mm -hmm. right? I almost want to say it was juicier too, or something. Something about like the broth itself. But I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think when the tea has a focus, since its movement is more complete, and then I think that's where maybe that's where you are experiencing. I think it's juicier mm. because with the whirlpool style, we could see the tea goes to the side of the cheek, underneath the tongue, mm -hmm. on the top of the tongue, and on the roof too. I think. But first is the presence of all those places are not as clear. Mm -hmm. And also we didn't get to watch it move. Right. It kind of just like, oh uh, yeah, I think it's there mm. in a vague way. Yeah, I was getting kind of bits and pieces of things, little little like areas. And I, I mentioned I felt it kind of move down to my chest a little bit, but it wasn't so like all there like this last brew that we had where yeah. it was like i can see it all now yeah 
And so I think with a T that that's why I talk about structure a lot. And a structure, I'm not trying to tell people that a structure have to be a certain way or rigid or because uh, a structure can be boring too, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, more mm -hmm. like uh, one dimensional, I guess, if I put it that way. When a thing has a good foundation and you can spot the center or when the center shows up, then when the thing start to move with the center, mm. it become very beautiful and it doesn't break. But mm -hmm. also when there's a wholesome structure and there's a center, use your imagination. When the thing is moving, then the dimension, the way that it can change, just like a human body then. If I, my body is loose and I have a center and I walk, and I try to dance, and then when I want to change it into the next move, then the way that I can change it, maybe a little bit more different ways, and yet I still don't lose my center. But if I don't own that and my body is rigid or I don't have a center, and I just like awkwardly try to move, first, I'm, I might actually fall down. Mm. You know, I will either fall down or I don't know what to do, or I actually try to move there, but I can't, you know? And I think a tea breath feels like that to me, mm. like a, a human's movement too. Mm. That helped me to understand. Mm -hmm. And I try to help people to understand that yeah. part. Because sometimes when people hear me talking about structure, they'll be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's very clear. Yeah, I'm not. I feel like I'm not crazy in saying that. It it's still Good. matching the way, the motion of the of the way you part it. Good. So it's like you know this feels like it's going straight into my nose. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, wow. Just I feel like I'm really getting a sense for the like the expansion, expansion yeah. of it. Yeah, that's the good word for it. Hmm. That is awesome. <laughs> and you can kind of feel it move on the sand yeah. is moving, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Like this soft mm. liquid in the mouth. Soft moving. And you can watch that structure of a movement. And it, it, your mind doesn't need to chase it. You just need to mm -hmm. watch it. So right. I watch it. So, oh, wow. It's there. It's there. It's really pretty. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's another really good way of putting it. That it's like last time I feel like for the Whirlpool style, I was I was doing more of like the, oh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's there maybe. Oh, it's maybe there. Where else is it? Whereas this one, it's just like, oh, there it is. <laughs> it's yeah. showing me more of itself so this session i don't have the intention or in <clears throat> position to tell people what is right and what is wrong that's not a way that i prefer to share things actually especially when it comes to tea just to tell people to do this and do that mm -hmm. of course then you say me as a learner you as a learner you watch somebody doing something and you are very new to it you copy Mm -hmm. And that's an excellent way to learn. I did that too. I watched so many people brewing tea in Taiwan. I keep watching them. I capture a feeling. I capture what's happening and et cetera, et cetera. However, when you get deeper and deeper into tea, your practice become different because of your understanding. Mm -hmm. Then I think there's a beautiful moment like try to say what is right and what is wrong. Because I actually, I came to a, a place uh, in 2017, uh, I was very lost because I put the word wrong into my practice. Because I went back to see like people who blew my mind basically mm. in Taiwan and I came back so lost. I was like, so I asked myself a question at that time, like did what I learned before that, because I started tea in 2005. 
from 2005 to 2017, my brewing style was that all wrong. Mm. And that's why it, it really hurt me when I have that kind of thinking. And then later I feel way more comfortable is, is that, no, it's not wrong. It's a learning process. Mm -hmm. And now another door, I always like to use the analogy, another door opens for me and I'm crossing that door to see a different uh, place of tea rather than, because I'll beat myself to death if I just keep thinking, well, that's a long time then, yeah. 2005 to 2017, what I learned was wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a brutal um, kind of a feeling, yeah. you know? Um, so today, just two different style of water into your pot or gai wan. Gai wan, you can do the same practice mm -hmm. too. I would say the most important thing is to taste if you can taste the difference. Yeah. And do you know why I want you or anybody and including myself to do this? A lot of people think tea is very spiritual. And I think it is. It's not spiritual that we all, whatever, you know. <laughs> but tea is a very mindful practice and it's very simple water in wait and water out and drink mm -hmm. that that's it water in wait water out and drink since it's so simple in a way i sometimes feel like when we are not conscious of what we are doing it actually shows in mm -hmm. a really big way if the tea drinker is willing and ready to see it so just like this waterfall style if you are ready to see it then it shows to you the tea is more focused but how many of us including myself i'm not calling names right now including myself hey john how are you doing today yeah it's so nice yeah. to drink tea with you even this most simple action i don't know how many times i was talking and it has an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go home, try it yourself. I'm not gonna recall this. This one of the most important step in a tea brewing, one, two, three, and four. Remember, I was unconscious on tea on one step. The first most important impact of my tea brewing. Most of us are not aware because it becomes habitual. Right. Mm -hmm. We just, I, I cannot do this. Yeah. I, do you know how proud I was for many years? I said I can brew tea with my eyes closed. I can brew two pots of tea. I can talk to people. I can do that. I was very proud of that because mm -hmm. I could do that. Now I'm totally not proud of that because I don't want to do that anymore. I want to brew tea this way. So, but not silent though. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> ever do silent tea brewing yeah <laughs> only with no one because no one does silent <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but this first moment please give it to yourself and your tea be silent mm. be silent and be with it just just watch the water it's just four seconds or something just like this Just like this, it changed the focus of mm. your tea. And now I'm talking now. <laughs> yeah. Well, it helps me, like, even, even um, you know, for me, having never really experimented with the whirlpool and all that, it helps me to focus on that moment yeah. by picking a spot. Because when you pick a spot to pour, you can just focus on that spot. And it helps me get in the moment rather than thinking about, like, oh, I'm going to like go all over and do all sorts of stuff. It's like, that's my spot. Yeah. And for this, for these few seconds, I'm going to just focus on that spot and pour the water in that spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think at first just practice this at home. And since you have been doing the waterfall style from day one, now a different level of practice, we'll talk about it maybe in the next few episodes, is the strength of the water. Mm. But, but don't do that yet. Right now it's practice, focus. Mm. Just stay with it. 
I'm very big on principles, but one shouldn't be rigid. But without foundation, things break apart. So when we have foundation, we practice enough, we have foundation, someday, I bet, maybe you can come back with the whirlpool style. And you know what? The tea will be very pretty. Mm. That's a friend of mine said that when you can do principles so well, the foundation is so well, you get to break them. Yeah. <laughs> eh. Yeah. <laughs> I felt that way when I was, when I told, I think Noah that I was pouring the water with my right hand. He said, oh, well, I know a guy who pours with his right hand and he's, and it's great tea. Yeah. Um, but the normal, the traditional way is with the left hand. And yeah. I was kind of like, well, I shouldn't start with the breaking rules i should start by using my left hand and learn the traditional style yeah and then you can determine you know after yeah. you've learned that yeah yeah but, exactly yeah. you know pra practice some fundamentals first that's right. why i practice tasting tea with you for such a long time mm -hmm. and then after that you know what it shouldn't be that rigid mm -hmm. <laughs> i always say, uh, uh. yeah sorry i'm like <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those who are not <laughs> watching, I was making a face, I guess. <laughs> She's making a face that was overanalyzing, like, where <laughs> things are going and all that. Which Sometimes is what, that's so boring. What we spend a lot of our time doing <laughs> for the seriously. podcast. <laughs> Tea drinking is not that way. Mm. Mm. But I had to do it that way mm. for a while. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. The width, the width of the scent is really amazing. Like the wide, huh? Yeah, like how wide it is. Mm. Good section. Good, yeah, great yeah. session. Um, I guess go home message know why you are doing mm. this with your tea and focus be with it and just practice that part mm. i think that'll be very rewarding yeah yeah cool great <laughs> that's it battery is over <laughs> bye bye everybody happy tea drinking bye bye <laughs> bye bye <laughs>